Welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed electromagnets and we defined electromagnets as temporary magnets which are produced when a soft magnetic material, in this case, we considered a soft iron core, is inserted inside a solenoid carrying current. In this case, we said the, so the soft magnetic material will get magnetized and one end will become a north pole and the other end will become a south pole. Then we also discussed how you can predict the polarities of this material by using Fleming's right hand grip rule for a solenoid current, which states that if you grasp a solenoid carrying current with your right hand, say that the fingers point in the direction of current in the solenoid, then the thumb will point to the north pole. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss some of the factors which affect the strength of um, an electromagnet. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to discuss at least four factors affecting the strength of an electromagnet. So the first factor that affects the strength of an electromagnet is the amount of current in the solenoid. So in this case, the strength of an electromagnet is directly proportional to the amount of current in the solenoid. So here, if you have large amount of current, then the electromagnet which will be formed will be very strong. And if you have a small amount of current, the, am the electromagnet which will be produced will be very small. So here we can even draw a diagram to demonstrate that if you have a soft uh, iron core, you have two soft iron core like this in this case, then now you have a wire. In the first case here, you have a wire. Then you connect three cells. You connect three dry cells like this as the source of your current. In this case, let's make this one uh, flow like that. So in this case, current will be flowing in that direction. We are going to complete this shortly. Then now flow like that. So in this case, current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal through, through the wire. So here in front, it will be moving up like that. Then behind, down like that. In this case, if you use Fleming's right hand grip rule, then this side will become North Pole and this is South Pole. Here we have three cells. Then in the second case, I want us to reduce the number of cells that we have and we use only one. So in the second case, if we use only one cell with the same, same number of turns, so here we only have one cell, then we will have the number of turns around this like that. So if we draw the solenoid in this soft ion like that, I hope you know how to draw this. It's very simple like that. Then after drawing this, then behind it will be moving down. So in this case, if you indicate the, the direction of current here, it will be from the positive terminal through the wire to the negative terminal. So here we have two different setups. This one, we have three batteries, three cells. Then here we have one cell. So in this case, three cells will produce large amount of current. So here there is large current. Here there will be a small current because of one cell. Therefore, here the electromagnet will be strong. Strong electromagnet. Then here there will be weak electromagnet. So in this case, the, the larger the current, the stronger the electromagnet. The weaker or the smaller the current, the weaker the electromagnet, keeping the number of turns constant and the, strength, the, the resistance of the wire constant, you only change the amount, the number of cells. We increase them from one to three, the electromagnet will become strong. The nature of the material will be the same. Here we will use soft iron of the same length, soft iron also, 
soft iron. So the soft iron that we are going to use should be of the same length. Then we should use the same material. Number of turns should be constant. If now we change the number of cells from three to one, the electromagnet will become weak. We increase from one to three, the electromagnet becomes very strong. So the second factor that affects the strength of an electromagnet is the number of turns of the solenoid. And in this case, the strength of the electromagnet is directly proportional to the number of turns of the solenoid. This means the more the number of turns, the strong the electromagnet. We can draw a setup to illustrate this, where we will have one setup with more number of turns and the other one with few number of turns. However, here you should keep the the, the, the thickness of the soft iron material that you are using constant, then you keep the number of cells or the amount of current a constant. The only thing that you are going to vary is the number of turns of the solenoid. So in this case, if we use two cells like that, then we have a switch here. We complete it like that. In this case, current will be flowing here in this solenoid. Now this solenoid, I'm going to draw one with many number of turns. So in this case, the solenoid has those number of turns where current will be flowing from the positive terminal to the negative terminal like this. Then using Fleming's right hand grip rule, this side will become North Pole and this one will be South Pole. Then now in the second scenario, we are going to draw uh, or we use the same number of cells. In this case, there are two, one, two cells. Then we have the same, same switch. The only thing that we are going to vary is the number of turns. So in this case, the number of turns are going to be one, two, three, four. So in this case, current is flowing also from the positive terminal to the negative terminal like that. And in this case, this side will become North Pole and this will be South Pole. Now, as you can see, here we have how many number of turns? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven number of turns. Then here we have only one, two, three, four. Four number of turns. So in this case, where we have more number of turns, here we'll have a strong electromagnet. Electromagnet formed. Where we have only four number of turns, there will be a weak electromagnet. So the more the number of turns, the stronger the electromagnet, the weaker or the smaller the number of turns, the weaker the electromagnet formed. The third factor that affects the strength of an electromagnet is the length of the solenoid. And in this case, the strength of an electromagnet is also directly proportional to the length of the solenoid. Therefore, in this case, the longer the solenoid, the stronger the electromagnet. However, you should note that we should keep other things constant. The length of the material we're going to use should be constant then the amount of current should be constant. Number of turns should be constant for you to consider the length of the solenoid as a factor. So in this case, if we use, or if we draw a diagram to represent that, then we will have a, a soft iron material like this one. Then in this case, we have, we have, a, we have a battery all two cells in this case we can use two cells we can use two cells here then we have a switch somewhere here connected with that then we can draw another one here same size of the soft ion that we are using then now we can draw a wire connected to same number of cells two of them then we have the same same switch like that. So in this case, if we complete this in such a way that we have a, a longer 
we want to have a very long solenoid. This one is going to be long. In this case, our current will be flowing in that direction. Then we have how many number of turns? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven number of turns. Then now in the second case, we are going to draw the same number of turns, same number of cells, but we are going to vary the length of the solenoid. So in this case, we can have one, two cells, two cells. Then we have our switch here. But now in this case, we have a very small a solenoid with the same number of turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven number of turns, just like the first one. So here we have seven number of turns. But now the length of this solenoid here is very small. This distance x. And here it's very long. This distance uh, call it Y. So in this case, we have the same material or same size of the material, same current, but now the length of the solenoid is varying, but it has the same same number of turns. So in this case, as you can see in the second diagram, there is a part here which will not be covered by current or which will not be covered by the solenoid, this part here. Therefore, it means it will not be magnetized. So in this case, if you have more number of long uh, solenoid, long solenoid, keeping all other things constant, then you will have a strong electromagnet. Then if you have a short solenoid, other things kept constant, you will have a weak electromagnet. The fourth factor that affects the strength of an electromagnet is the shape of the core. And in this case, horseshoe shaped core produces a stronger electromagnet than a U shaped uh, core, while a U shaped core produces a stronger electromagnet than a straight core. So, in this case, what we have been considering has been a straight core, but now if we change the shape for it to be a horseshoe, Horseshoe looks like this. The two ends are so close, so that if you magnetize it, the North Pole, let's say North Pole and South Pole, will be very close. This distance is very small. This horseshoe. This one is horseshoe. Horseshoe shaped uh, core. Then we have a U-shaped. U-shaped looks like this. This is a U-shaped core. So as you can see, for a U-shaped, if you magnetize this north pole and this south pole, if you magnetize it, what will happen? This distance is too long from the pole. The poles are very far away from each other or relatively far from each other. So it will be relatively weaker than the first one. And now the last one we have, oh, this are U-shaped, let's label it, U-shaped core. And now we have the last one as the, the, the straight core. Straight core looks like this, where if you magnetize it, North Pole and South Pole, the two poles will be very far away from each other. Therefore, this straight core will produce a relatively weaker electromagnet than the U-shaped and the horseshoe. So this is the strongest, relatively strong. Then this one will be the weak. It will produce the weakest electromagnet. So that will mark the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss an electric bell.